Yeah. Um, just before Jonathan starts, we should um, introduce him and mm. he can correct me mm. every time I make a mistake. <laughs> this is Jonathan. Mm. He's, and his last name is? Newman. 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 Yeah, yeah. Um, it's all written up there. Mm. Is it pronounced that or is it Neumann? Neumann, yeah. 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 But Newman, the, the meaning. So Newman is the English pronunciation. Mm. And um, he's here in Australia for six months? No, four, four, five months. Ah, so you stayed here specially. Five months. Mm. That's nearly six months. Mm. <laughs> and he's um, here on a... Is it, are you actually on a scholarship? No, exchange, exchange semester. Exchange semester mm. at La Trobe Uni. Mm. That's right. And whilst you're here, you're in particular studying what? Oh, yeah. <coughs> actually, I'm studying ecology and conservation back home in, in Berlin, but I study in Potsdam. And here I'm, I'm doing cross coursework, so I can... I did some classes and then I can use the points back home, so... Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right, and you're heading back home when? And end of July. So we're safe after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As Martin said, hopefully so. And uh, Jonathan came along last meeting um, to check us all out, and I thought, oh well, yeah, he might he might have a chat to us if we're nice to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he said, well, I haven't got anything to talk about. And I said, he sort of said, well, we talked about a few things, didn't we? One of the things was Jonathan was interested in the things that he was familiar with that are here but are not quite the same. Mm -hmm. And so that's the subject of your talk. Yes, so actually Mike, um, Mike, yeah, okay, actually Mike was the one who said, oh, do you want to show us some photos you were shot during your time? And said, yes, why not? And then Peter said, oh, why you don't want to compare with with your stuff back home and then I got very excited and said yes why not so now I can start officially so I'm very happy to be here Turn the lights up? What? Turn the lights up John? Lights oh, up? Oh, yeah, maybe yeah, oh. He's ugly too so turn the lights up <laughs> oh, right. and Before I start with my serious talk I want to pass something around Dead right people, I'll come back to them later Can you put the lights up? Yeah, maybe you need the light uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah Like the disco, hmm? Um, I guess I'm very excited that um, my first public talk ever and then in Australia, so I can't believe it. And let's start. Oh yeah, the very first one thing I just want to acknowledge the Bumundiri people and pay my respect to them. <coughs> I don't want to say this is a standard sentence they say all the time because it's not authentic when they say something they have learned by chance. But I just want to pay my respect to the Aboriginal people who rule the country and your yeah. Yeah, Wuminika La Trobe is, is a, um, a, how you call it, a subject you have to do online subject right now. Oh, where we want to go, so I don't, I didn't want to show you a map from, from Australia because I think you all know where Australia is and where Melbourne is, but I thought it may be useful where is Bodora. You see there's Melbourne Museum, we are there right now, and you take to the 86, the tram, and I have 40 minutes up to La Trobe University, and then, ah, yeah, was my, okay. And you asked Martin along to give you a lift home. <laughs> oh, maybe my wizard, of course, Martin stays far away and I don't know. Maybe now we can take, take, turn the light off again, I'm not sure. Fair enough. Mm? Thank you, thank you, Mike. So, oh, yeah, we, we take a train ride to Honora. And here's the campus, I cut it off, but, and here's the like, road wildlife sanctuary. Actually, if you never have been there, you have to go there, it's very nice. But I won't talk about that too much today, I think one or two animals are from there, but not a main thing. The very important thing is the graduate house. Where is it here? Because there is a place where I stay. And this is the room where all the insects are collected because it's my room. <laughs> but you know, no, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. And very, uh, here is the PC lab, it's very nice light. There were very nice insects, and also here's the TV room, there were also nice insects. And here's a very nice lawn. I spent a lot of evenings hunting gold crickets there, so, but the gold crickets will be featured later. So, oh, I'm always said, already happy that you have to log in the first slide. So, 
This is not an insect, I know, but I couldn't resist with a rubber round spider. I, I got very excited with that. Lady, oh, this was schlecht. That lady, I found on my very first day in Australia and I thought, oh, what could happen more now? I, I thought actually I could go back home now. And I <laughs> see the rubber round spider on my very first day. And then we watched many it passed away and I thought, oh no. I never see them again, but last week I found another lady, different species, and I got also very excited. So this is enough for spiders this evening. But actually I would love to give you a talk, 90 minutes about the exciting spiders I have found you, but I think 20 minutes about insects could be also fun. So I, I knew for insect talk, not for spider talk, so. Oh, we've got a, another new member over here. You can, we've got another new member over here. Well, actually, probably next week. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> Jonathan, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're familiar with each other. Yeah, talking about spiders. He'll, he'll talk yeah. about spiders. Oh, I have to think. Yeah, I, I have to listen carefully because I want to know something in the end. Yesterday, I realized I forgot to feature two important groups. So maybe you, you know in the end which two important groups I missed. I missed to feature, but we'll see. So now the first group starts. I. I I thought, how, how should I order, or how should I structure my talk? Mm. And I decided I do it like the book, so I start with the ancient ones and without the pupil stage and the one with who have been pupils and so on comes later. But yeah, the, the first one, the comparison is the tau emerald and the common data. <coughs> and yeah, unfortunately, the density files I have to admit, but that's right. And the tau emerald is, is um, the oldest from a fellow student. In your match, she does very nice professional photos. Uh, and one thing I just want to say is, however, it was very, very common dragonfly on campus everywhere on the roads. And unfortunately, they were everywhere when I just arrived in Australia. And when I settled in and I thought, oh, no, I could, can take care of them dragonflies, they were all gone, so it was too late. And so actually, I missed them because when I arrived there, I didn't have the patience to wait for them and to try to catch them. And this is a common data, they, they get um, red as males later and brown as females and I read them because I found them in a fountain. Here, this is the only Potsdam logo, it's a fountain in front of our library in, in Potsdam Golden. And there they used to stay the dragonfly nymphs, but actually also here. And but we also have a very nice nice real pond and there we have a lot of my nice dragonfly species, and it's very easy to rear a um, dragonfly army with cut in rainworms or earthworms. Yeah, earthworms are called in English. Yeah. <coughs> yes. Yeah, now the real bugs. Only one slide. And actually, I did the slide only to show us, to show you the very exciting essence in bug I found last week in the that broke my type sanctuary. Got very excited when I found it with wild bush eating. And yeah, the harlequin bug was a very common species also in everywhere on the, on the orchids and on, on other shrubs. Yeah, you, thanks uh, to do you find those what? harlequin bugs in uh, Germany? No. No. Simple no, things though. So. Yeah. No. So we have the fire bug and the fire bug everybody knows because it's very, very common small bug and it's a, even even small children know them but they call them fire beetle or fire caver and you always have to correct them carefully now it's not a beetle it's a bug <laughs> and then you can show them the or how you call it proboscis proboscis yeah proboscis and then oh you, and then you need to explain beetles they can chew and bugs they can't chew and then they understand but yes it's very it's a very nice bug and last year I learned something very new they look like the African voodoo mask. Here are their eyes. <laughs> and here are the, the, the big mouth. Very, very nice. And it was not aware of that before. And then, of course, the green shield bug. In German, it's called the green stink bug. Everybody knows it well because they have a string and smell. And yeah, you can tease people and they say, oh, keep that and take it in the hand and then smell. So, yeah. Yes, but these are very nice. Bugs from home, yeah, the Haliki bugs is very nice and big. Yeah. 
Yeah, one of my favorite insects group because they look so excited are the earwigs. There are two groups, earwigs with wings and earwigs without wings. And these are unfortunately all the introduced species. This is a great field earwig. I've never seen it before. The first time I've seen it here in Australia. And then, of course, my earwig from home. But the photos were taken from here. And even <coughs> the earwig looks very harmless. They can hurt them a lot if you're not careful. And yeah, I think I don't need to explain to anybody how to. Oh, well, I explained. So that's how somebody is sticking into your finger. Yes? That's yeah. sticking into your finger. Yes, sticking finger. And I just want to mention this is the male because the pincers are very soft and this is a female because the pincers are um, straight. Just in case you want to annoy someone with that knowledge. <laughs> I didn't think this, yeah. <laughs> it should. Yes. Ah, and this was exciting. Unfortunately, it passed away. I couldn't keep it. And maybe they need a lot of moisture, but it started to, um, to fly in the container, and I wanted to have a photo with the open wings, but I didn't, I didn't manage. And I still wait for the moment that when I see a flying earwig. I've never seen it by now. One of my big childhood dreams, so maybe one day I'll see it. <laughs> because our species is to is, is to be told can fly as well, but hey, rarely the, does it. Good, yeah. yeah, this is a earwig without wings, and there's one very common species, the uh, uh, ring necked earwig, or Mugana Mulicus, the cosmopolitan species, and also back home in Germany. It's, it's widespread, but only in the greenhouses because they can't survive the cost. Also, you have to search them in, in tropical greenhouses from zoological or botanical gardens. Yeah, the photo is very awful, I know, but I'm very proud of it because it was one of the first, first ones I've seen of the species in 2012. So, very happy about it. And uh, the other one was a big surprise. That one, the male. In the um, top I found last week at, at the one um, yeah, in front of the TV room I showed you because it was attracted to the light. And I got very excited with it. And my um, German Ewig friend, Danilo Matzki, is the only one in Germany who takes care of Ewigs. He gave me the premium, um, gave me the ID. And thanks to Martin, I can send him that Ewig to Germany. So when it passed away, we can put it in Olko and then send it to Germany. And then you get a proper ID, but probably it's true. And maybe last week I found the female of that species, but we'll see. So, <coughs> on a now an exciting slide. I think everybody likes mantis. And our species, we have one here in Europe, there's only, no, in Middle Europe, not in Europe, but in Middle Europe, in Germany, there's only one mantis species, it's mantis religiosa, European mantis. And we even have some populations in, in Berlin. Even the city center on the old, old, um, what do you call it, a train station, on a former train station. And I yeah, and was very happy when I saw a mating pair. And against the news, the males are not eaten always because they can escape very quickly. <coughs> and yes, the species I found here was only the false garden mantis, the soil mantis, the and also my very first evening when I arrived here in Australia, I found the young female in front of the one door and I reared it. And next time when you complain about the invasive of gambus and you know what to do, they like it. So catch some gambuses and feed it to your mother. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. nom, nom, nom. So now the, the promised small crickets, they were in front of my lawn and we are frogging all or we are singing after heavy rain and I got very excited and I saw, saw the um, small hills and the holes and I didn't manage to catch them until I found out I need to dig a circle, circle around the hill to get the tunnel damaged and then I could dig them out. And during my digging, unfortunately, I squeezed some old crickets because they are very soft, but the magpies, they take care of the squeeze for so <laughs> I had someone who was happy when I was hunting, so. And then, Occasionally, I also found a female. The interesting fact I was not aware of because our species in Germany, both sexes are winged, and here in Australia, the female, the females can fly. You see the hindwings, and the males they cannot fly. 
but they can sing. And then I put them together and then I observed the sperma tube one got very excited, but unfortunately the female escaped, although I, I would look, have loved to rear them or to breed them, but shouldn't happen. And now a very funny story, because nobody from my house is there, I, could I can tell it. <laughs> some, some weeks ago I was called, oh Jonathan, Jonathan, there's a big insect in, my, in our kitchen. I, I went there and where is it all went under the fridge? Mm. Okay. Then I couldn't find it, and then I then they called me back. Oh, there is it, there is it. It was a mole cricket, and it was one from up from my room, and I already missed it, so it freaked <laughs> out. And but I didn't call them, and it was my pet. <laughs> then I released it after that. Couldn't get into the kitchen again. <coughs> yeah. But very nice and spare one to call, but very excited. So now something from Germany. I think you have them as well here in Australia, no? three crickets, I think so. There was a very nice call and 10 years ago in Berlin there was a population discovered from that species. Actually it's a Mediterranean species or only in southern Germany because it's hot dry climate. And then two years ago I decided well, I, to check my neighborhood for that species and I discovered some populations. And interestingly also a near um, a railway track because railway tracks are very nice and hot and they have very nice habitats for these heat loving insect species. Yeah. All I want to do to say um, during the last year they, they get more records in Germany, probably due to climate change, but it's a very nice small cricket, but hard to detect. Oops, sorry. Because you have to go out at night and listen to them, and during the day it's very hard to to, to see them. Even if you are are sleeping with the nets, it's not easy to get them. So this is my one of my main jokes for the talk because uh, yeah, T Viridissima has two meanings. I was not aware of that before. Because back home for T Viridissima, everybody knows it's Tetigonia Viridissima. But here I was surprised with you have also Torvia Viridissima. The company Katie did. It was on, on one of our nights, so one night and it has also laid some eggs and I realized it only afterwards that it has laid eggs when I checked for a later time. But yeah, it was a very nice species and Teddy Gunya will listen but the red green bush pickle is very, very common and also everybody knows it and very, very big. And I